In business, a competitive advantage is the attribute that allows an organization to outperform its competitors. A competitive advantage may include access to natural resources, such as high-grade ores or a low-cost power source, highly skilled labor, geographic location, high entry barriers, and access to new technology. Overview Competitive advantage is the leverage that a business has over its competitors. This can be gained by offering clients better and greater value. Advertising products or services with lower prices or higher quality piques the interest of consumers. Target markets recognize these unique products or services. This is the reason behind brand loyalty, or why customers prefer one particular product or service over another. Value proposition is important when understanding competitive advantage. If the value proposition is effective, that is, if the value proposition offers clients better and greater value, it can produce a competitive advantage in either the product or service. The value proposition can increase customer expectations and choices. Michael Porter defined the two ways in which an organization can achieve competitive advantage over its rivals, cost advantage and differentiation advantage. Cost advantage is when a business provides the same products and services as its competitors, albeit at a lesser cost. Differentiation advantage is when a business provides better products and services as its competitors. In Porter's view, strategic management should be concerned with building and sustaining competitive advantage. Competitive advantage seeks to address some of the criticisms of comparative advantage. Competitive advantage rests on the notion that cheap labor is ubiquitous and natural resources are not necessary for a good economy. The other theory, comparative advantage, can lead countries to specialize in exporting primary goods and raw materials that trap countries in low-wage economies due to terms of trade. Competitive advantage attempts to correct this issue by stressing on maximizing scale economies in goods and services that garner premium prices. Stutz and Wharf, 2009. The term competitive advantage refers to the ability gained through attributes and resources to perform at a higher level than others in the same industry or market. Christensen and Fay, 1984. K, 1994. Porter 1980 cited by Chakabagi and Lynch 1999, p. 45. The study of this advantage has attracted profound research interest due to contemporary issues regarding superior performance levels of firms in today's competitive market. A firm is said to have a competitive advantage when it is implementing a value-creating strategy not simultaneously being implemented by any current or potential player." Barney 1991 cited by Clulo et al. 2003, p. 221, successfully implemented strategies will lift a firm to superior performance by facilitating the firm with competitive advantage to outperform current or potential players Passamar and Calantone 2000, p. 18. To gain competitive advantage, a business strategy of a firm manipulates the various resources over which it has direct control, and these resources have the ability to generate competitive advantage. Reed and Philippi 1990 cited by Rigamampianina 2003, p. 362. Superior performance outcomes and superiority in production resources reflect competitive advantage Day and Wesley 1988 cited by Lau 2002, p. 125, the quotes above signify competitive advantage as the ability to stay ahead of present or potential competition. Also, it provides the understanding that resources held by a firm and the business strategy will have a profound impact on generating competitive advantage. Powell 2001, p. 132, views business strategy as the tool that manipulates resources and creates competitive advantage. 
Hence, viable business strategy may not be adequate unless it possesses control over unique resources that have the ability to create such a relatively unique advantage. The three forms of generic competitive strategy Michael Porter, a graduate of Harvard University, wrote a book in 1985 which identified three strategies that businesses can use to tackle competition. This book was named the ninth most influential management book of the 20th century. These approaches can be applied to all businesses whether they are product-based or service-based. He called these approaches generic strategies. They include cost leadership, differentiation, and focus. These strategies have been created to improve and gain a competitive advantage over competitors. These strategies can also be recognized as the comparative advantage and the differential advantage. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Cost leadership strategy. Cost leadership is a business ability to produce a product or service that will be at a lower cost than other competitors. If the business is able to produce the same quality product but sell it for less, this gives them a competitive advantage over other businesses. Therefore, this provides a price value to the customers. Lower costs will result in higher profits as businesses are still making a reasonable profit on each good or service sold. If businesses are not making a large enough profit, Porter recommends finding a lower cost base such as labor, materials, and facilities. This gives businesses a lower manufacturing cost over those of other competitors. The company can add value to the customer via transfer of the cost benefit to them. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Differential strategy. A differential advantage is when a business products or services are different to its competitors. In his book, Michael Porter recommended making those goods or services attractive to stand out from their competitors. The business will need strong research, development and design thinking to create innovative ideas. These improvements to the goods or service could include delivering high quality to customers. If customers see a product or service as being different from other products, consumers are willing to pay more to receive these benefits. Topic: <laughs> Focus strategy. Focus strategy ideally tries to get businesses to aim at a few target markets rather than trying to target everyone. This strategy is often used for smaller businesses since they may not have the appropriate resources or ability to target everyone. Businesses that use this method usually focus on the needs of the customer and how their products or services could improve their daily lives. In this method, some firms may even let consumers give their inputs for their product or service. This strategy can also be called the segmentation strategy, which includes geographic, demographic, behavioral, and physical segmentation. By narrowing the market down to smaller segments, businesses are able to meet the needs of the consumer. Porter believes that once businesses have decided what groups they will target, it is essential to decide if they will take the cost leadership approach or differentiation approach. Focus strategy will not make a business successful. Porter mentions that it is important to not use all three generic strategies because there is a high chance that companies will come out achieving no strategies instead of achieving success. This can be called stuck in the middle and the business won't be able to have a competitive advantage when businesses can find the perfect balance between price and quality it usually leads to a successful product or service a product or service must offer value through price or quality to ensure the business is successful in the market to succeed it's not enough to be just as good as 
Another business Success comes to firms that can deliver a product or service in a manner that is different, meaningful, and based on their customers' needs and desires. Deciding on the appropriate price and quality depends on the business's brand image and what they hope to achieve in relation to their competition. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Underlying internal factors. Positioning is an important marketing concept. The main purpose of positioning is often to create the right perceptions in comparison to competitors. Thus, it creates competitive advantage. This positioning, or competitive advantage, is based on creating the right image or identity in the minds of the target group. This positioning decision exists of selecting the right core competencies to build upon and emphasize, therefore, both corporate identity and core competencies are underlying internal factors of competitive advantage. <laughs> corporate identity The operational model for managing corporate reputation and image of Gray and Barmer 1998 proposes that corporate identity, communication, image, and reputation the fundamental components of the process of creating competitive advantage. Corporate identity through corporate communication creates corporate image and reputation, with an end result of competitive advantage. Corporate identity is the reality of an organization. It refers to the distinct characteristics or core competencies of the organization. It is the mental picture of the company held by its audiences. Corporate communication refers to all the official and informal communication sources, through a variety of media, by which the company outsources its identity to its audiences or stakeholders. Corporate communication is the bridge between corporate identity and corporate image or reputation. The above stated process has two main objectives, namely to create the intended image in the minds of the company's principal constituents and managing the process to create a favorable reputation in the minds of the important stakeholders. Gray and Barmer 1998 say that a strong image can be built through a coordinated image building campaign and reputation, on the other hand, requires a praiseworthy identity that can only be shaped through consistent performance. <laughs> <laughs> Core competencies A core competency is a concept introduced by Prahalad and Hamill 1990. Core competencies are part of the corporate identity, they form the foundation of corporate competitiveness. The competitiveness of a company is based on the ability to develop core competencies. A core competency is, for example, a specialized knowledge, technique, or skill. Yang 2015 concluded, with the examination of a long-term development model, that developing core competencies and effectively implementing core capabilities are important strategic actions for any enterprise in order to pursue high long-term profits. In the end, real advantage can be created by the management's ability to unify corporate-wide technologies and production skills into competencies that capacitate individual businesses to adapt quickly to changing opportunities, to sustain leadership in a chosen core competency area. Companies should seek to maximize their competency factors in the core products like being important in positioning its values, distinctive, differentiated, superior, community communicable visibility, unique, affordable, and profitable. When a company achieves this goal, it allows it to shape the evolution of an end market. See also Comparative advantage Core competency Cost leadership Differentiation economics, Economies of scale Resource-based view Tacit knowledge 
value chain. <laughs> 